Welcome to another training session for OpenDSSG. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the false study functionality within OpenDSSG. If you have access to it, you can do it through the tools palette or through the menu at the top of the front panel. Just select false study and OpenDSS is going to perform the false study for the, for the active feeder. Then you have several tools, tools for looking for a specific bus, if you know the name, just type it or search for it on the list and you're going to locate it there. Also, you can select the bus from the GUI and automatically the table showing the results is going to highlight the bus and it's going to show you all the data for the bus. So you can do it graphically or just by writing the name of the bus. You have other tools for filtering the content of the false style results by number of faces. You can select one, two, or three, or all faces. Also, you can sort and find the maximum and minimum uh, element depending on if you select to do the filtering by short circuit current or by voltage space. And also you have another tool for showing on the GUI the selected bus from the list. This report can be exported to different to, to different parts. You can export it to the clipboard or you can export it to Excel. This to deliver more information than the one that you can see on the table. This is the, the file that is exported to Excel. So there you will see the same fields that you have on the false study results table, but also you'll find additional information. So the first Five fields correspond to the index of the element, the name of the bus, the short circuit uh, current, voltage space, and number of phases. But what's next? Next, we have the complex numbers that were used to calculate the short circuit current. And also, we have the complex numbers for building the short circuit impedance matrix. And we can verify it here. So, for example, for the first bus that we have, this is a single phase bus, we're going to calculate the magnitude of the short circuit current using the elements that we have by hand. So, we're going to use the real part and the imaginary part. And as you can see, the magnitude calculated matches with what was inside the report originally. And the other two elements for the short circuit matrix, well, are the complex elements used to calculate that, that matrix, uh, the primitive matrix in that case. Let's try to do the exercise with a three-phase bus. So we're going to move this here, and after the number of phases, we're going to take two, four, six elements, because it's three-phase, so we have a complex pair for each one of the phases. Here we can easily differentiate the real part for phase A, the imaginary part for phase A, and the same for phase B and phase C, just like we're doing here. So we have the imaginary part for B, now real and imaginary parts for phase C. With that, we can calculate the magnitude and phase angle if we want for the short circuit current per phase. And now with the other, the rest of the data, we can calculate or we can organize everything to see better the short circuit impedance. So the first two, four, six elements are going to be the first row. Then the next six are going to be row two. And finally, we're going to have the elements for the third row. These elements are delivered as complex pairs. So each one of those is basically real and imaginary part for the impedance in that cell of the short circuit impedance matrix. So you can calculate it, you can extract it, and with that you have all the data you need from the false circuit, or from the false study.
You can do it for all the different buses on the system. The information is there. Thank you.